What is going on, everybody? This is Mr. Banks here. And I wanted to just go over my how you can play my call list in the mornings that I put out, my watch list, call trigger list. Um, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Anything said on this call should not be taken as financial advice, purely entertainment only. So moving forward today, how do I take, how do you take my calls? How do you play them? How do you find them? Let's get started. It's pretty actually really simple. I am just going over levels mostly. And as we know, levels don't lie, right? Levels are the truth. If something breaks one level, it's going to go to the next. If it rejects, it's going to pull back. If it bounces, it is going to go up, right? Right. Now, the method I use, I coin, I call it the bounce rejection strategy. What does this mean? So the bounce break rejection strategy. So when a stock hits a level, it can do one of three things. It can either bounce, it can reject it, or it can break it. Now, when we are looking at a level of support for a bounce, right? This means that I am considering it to be a bullish or a call, right? Because I'm considering it to be a bounce off a certain level to take a call going up. Now, here's the thing. These are levels, correct? So if a stock comes, if I have a level as a bounce level, this could actually turn into a put technically, right? So I'm looking at this to be a strong level of support, right? I called this bounce today for NVIDIA. Um, I was looking at roughly 180 to 185 area. And so I was looking for a bounce in this area, right? But what can happen if it doesn't bounce? It can fail it, right? So if it failed this level, we know we could have taken puts, right? So if we fail a level, we can take puts. So let me just bring it back a little bit. It is the bounce, break, or reject strategy, right? Because when a stock hits a level, it can do one of three things. It can bounce at it, it could reject it, or it could break it slash fail it. So going back to my watch, how do I find these plays? Well, as you can see, I usually play a lot of the same tickers. A lot of the chips, you know, NVIDIA, AMD have some, you know, great move, movements on them during the day. So this is why I like to play them. I like to play them over and over. Um, a great tip is that you should find a couple stocks that you like to play, learn them, know them and just play them over and over and over again. Okay, guys, you don't need this big inventory of stocks to play, right? You don't need this. You don't need that. You don't need the next play. You literally could just play one or two tickers and become a millionaire, millionaire just off of that. You can make millions playing one ticker. Now, I want to get that through your guys' heads. You only need one ticker or one stock to become a millionaire. Now, of course, there's a bunch of different strategies, but if you're playing options, you really only need to know even commons too, but let's just go for options now. You only really need to know one or two tickers, learn them, know their levels, play a call, play a put, depending on how it reacts to your levels during the day. And it really is as simple as that. You guys, you know, you don't need to overthink this. Um, it's a very level-based system that stocks like to play off of. So. Going back to my watch, NVIDIA, I had a bounce today between 180, 185. How did I find that level? So now I'm going to go over levels, right? So I went over the strategy, bounce, break, reject, right? Stocks can do one or three things at a level. Now, how do I find these levels for my watch? Well, what I like to do is I like to do the 30 minute and the 10 minute. Sometimes I do the 5, 15, but I do like to start with the 30 mostly to find my levels. Now, what I'm looking for, everybody knows the pre-market high and the pre-market low. So write that down, the pre-market high and the pre-market low, I'm always mapping out every single day on the stocks that I'm trading. Beyond that, how did I find this 180, 185 level on the video? Now I made this very bare bones, literally just candlesticks and levels, right? Now, if we take a look, um, last week, what did NVIDIA do? What did NVIDIA do? Now, NVIDIA had a nice breakout, right? So nice little breakout. It had a retest and a breakout. So 
What do stocks like to do? Breakout, retest, breakout, retest, breakout, retest. Now we here we could see that this broke out and it retested a little right here. But here's our major retest, breakout and retest, right? So we have this level of a retest. So we know this is a strong support, right? Because we broke out, we retested, found the support, and now we jumped higher. We had that breakout. So we know that this area is a very strong support. Now, this area is around 185, 184. So to find 180, let's just come down a little bit more to this level. We see that this was a major resistance level that in turn broke out. You know, it had a breakout of the resistance. Um, so I saw 180, right? This would be my lowest level that I'm watching, which happened, you know, last week on Friday. So we have this lower level. We saw it was a major, major resistance and it turned into a breakout. So now this is going to be my low for today. Uh, that's why I said 180, 185. This is where I found this level. And then we had a breakout from there, right? And then a retest and found support and broke out. So now this was my next level, right? 185. So we have this, which was a resistance that broke out, turned into support. So now I have 180 as a level. We had the breakout retest where this turned into support and that's the 185 level. So essentially all these levels are, are just support and resistance levels. So I had 180 to 185, as you can see, this was a major breakout and these would be major levels to watch. Of course, I had the pre-market levels at 187, but that was very close to 185. So roughly in this area. And of course, I also had on my watch a break of 190 taking 200 calls. So this one was super easy. Usually if I'm, if I'm playing a break, it's just the pre-market high, right? Just the pre-market high, that's where I find these break calls. But looking for these bounce calls, I'm looking at either the pre-market low or I'm looking at a major support level and where these made this major support level was on the video was actually found last week. One being 185, the next one being right here um, at 180. So as we can see, it bounced literally perfectly off of this level um, coming down to 183. So that 180, 185, um, as you could see, it broke out, retested this level yet again and broke out again. So this was a perfect bounce level, perfect, play, perfect place to place your calls. Um, so yeah, this is how I, this is the NVIDIA play. Now, let me go a little bit further and explain more. The next step is to throw the indicators on, right? Our moving averages. So how also did I find this confirmation of this level? Well, let's throw on some indicators. Um, let's just look at the moving averages for now. Where was our 50-day moving average on the 30-minute? Hmm, kind of familiar, right? Right in this 185 level. So knowing that this was a strong support level along with the 50 MA just gave me my confirmation for this bounce area as well, right? So I went from my levels first, a major support and resistance levels, right? From there, I drew my lines. And then from there, I am now going to my moving averages to see if anything correlates or matches up. And in this case, it did. The 50-day moving average on a 30-minute lined up perfectly on my bounce area. Now, I did like to say at the beginning of this video, I do like to use the 10-minute as well. So let's go back to the 10-minute. Um, you know, the 10-minute obviously gives you more candles. You can kind of see the action just a little bit more. So again, you can see that these levels, you know, this 180, you can see this breakout a little bit better on the 10 minute. You can see that this 180 level right here, right? Which was the resistance broke out. See, I broke out and retested this level right here. You can see it better on the one, the 10 minute and the 30 minute. So this is how I got that 180, 185 level. But look at that bounce area, right? 180, 185. What is in that bounce area for the 10 minute? The 200 day moving average. What? do you know? We have the 200 day, which is probably one of the biggest magnets that you can find on the 10 minute for confirmation. And we also have on the 30 minute, the confirmation of the 50 day moving average, right? So both times, both times. Now, I hope this helped you guys a lot. You know, this is how I find my levels. 
This is how you can play them or trade them during the day. And this is how you would play my watch list. So again, what are a couple of things I'm looking for? I like to play the same tickers over and over again. So as you can see, Tesla, NVIDIA, SPY, AMD, over and over and over again. I know them, I know their levels, I know the daily price actions on them. So I know the big picture on them, like the daily, the weekly, and the monthlies on them. It just makes it so much easier when you only stick to a couple tickers. From there, I'm going to go look at major support and resistance levels. Now, the easiest is to always map out your pre-market levels. After that, let's go back a day or two. Sometimes I've had to go back a full week, but let's go back to see where these major support and resistance levels out were. You know, we had this major breakout. Let's go to the 10 minute. It shows this one a little bit, a lot better. You know, I mean, we had this major level right here, right? At 180. It broke out, right? Retested it here and then broke out again. So now we knew that 180 was a major level, right? Because it never, it retested it during pre-market, not intraday, uh, not intraday. Now, again, it broke out, retested. So now we have this 85 level, right? So levels, levels, levels do not lie. Find your levels on the major breakouts, on the major resistances and support. From there, add your moving averages. These will help your confirmation um, of your bounce zones. And last thing, yeah, last thing I just want to reiterate, this is a bounce break reject strategy. So there's actually always three different things you could be doing once something hits my levels on my watch list, right? So say this is a major support bounce area. That's why I took it as a bounce. But again, say this was a major red day, bad news, whatever came out, and it's just, it's dumping, right? This major area of support, I was looking for a bounce to take calls, can now turn to a put because this is now a broken area of support, right? It failed the support, so now we could take puts. So I hope you guys, I hope this makes a little bit more sense. I um, hope you guys can understand this a little bit better. I will make more videos on this. Um, but yeah, this was the video, super simple to the point, looking at levels, confirming with my moving averages, and that is how you play it. Now, again, I would map out these, you know, support and resistance levels. So like for the video today, I would map out 180 to 185. I would know that that's my area. I'd also map out 190, right? As the breaks. Now I have these two major areas. Uh, what you could do is essentially, depending on your thing, you could always add like you know, an area like this, right? 180 to 185. You can have your line there as that major support that I'm looking at for my candlesticks. But again, we're looking at this bounce area zone. So you could, you could go ahead and throw on one of these so you have the whole zone up so that when you do start to see the reversal happening, you know, okay, cool. This is in my bounce area. Uh, I'm confirming it. I'm going to go take calls out of it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your nights. I probably will try to do a trade review uh, mostly every day just so you guys can fully understand this. I know this was a little bit longer video than usual. Um, I'll try to condense them a little bit better, but I just wanted to get all of the information out there on how I find my watch list, how you play them, and what is the best way to play them. And I hope everyone understood. If not, more videos will be coming out, and I will see you guys next time.